Hi, Dave Williams here. I would like to talk today very briefly about the difference between combinational logic circuits and sequential logic circuits. A combinational logic circuit is one in which the outputs of the circuit depend only on the inputs. So if we consider that we just have a black box here and we have a number of inputs, doesn't matter how many, just some number, I'll do three here, these three input signals, digital signals, come into the logic circuit and the values of those inputs determine what the values of the outputs are. And the only thing that determines what the values of those outputs are, are the inputs. A good example of a combinational logic circuit is an adder. So I'm going to draw a 4-bit adder here. So this 4-bit adder, the value of the outputs, which are the sigma 3, 2, 1, and 0, and the, and the carry out, so this is the sum, depends only on what values are applied to the inputs. So if, for example, if I apply the values 0, 1, 0, 1, and 1, 0, 0, 1, this is 5 plus 9, the output's going to be 14. Then if I change the values of the inputs, to 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. So this is 7 plus 8, giving me a 0 on the carry out and 8 for the sum bits. The value of the outputs, again, depends only on the value of the inputs. It doesn't matter what my previous addition was. Other standard examples of combinational logic circuits where the outputs depend only on the inputs are multiplexers, demultiplexers, encoders, decoders, parity generators, parity checkers, etc. On the other hand, the outputs of a sequential logic circuit depend not only on the inputs, but also on the current and sometimes past states of the outputs. So if we have a logic block like this with some inputs coming into it, these inputs help determine what the outputs are going to be. But at the same time, these outputs get fed back to the to the inputs and become inputs themselves so in other words the circuit has some memory about the past outputs and this information about what the past outputs are can be used to help determine what the next outputs are going to be a good and really simple example of a sequential logic circuit is a counter and if we consider that the logic of the counters inside this box here we have a control signal coming in to turn the counter on, call that the enable. We also have another control signal in, we'll call this the clock that determines when the counter is going to, to tick to the next count. And then we have the count coming out. However, the information about which count we're on also needs to be one of the inputs. So that information needs to be fed from the output back to the input. So for example, if we're on count number three, if we're on tick number three, that information needs to be known at the input so that the counter knows to increment onto count number four. So this sequential logic circuit, the counter, has a couple of input signals and some output signals for the count for that information about the count needs to be fed back into the input for the counter to know what state it's in and what state to go into next. Hopefully this gives you an idea of the difference between combinational logic and sequential logic. Uh, you can check out my other videos for some specific examples of each of these different types of logic to see how they work and how they are designed. Thanks for watching.